Hi, you're watching Flight Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today I create a track using these two devices here. The Yamaha QY70 and the Roland JDO8. Advantage, both are battery powered, so you could use them anywhere. Of course, to me the song is the most important thing, but to you, maybe the process of creating the song is more interesting. So I'll show you both, here we go. If you're new to this channel and didn't watch my previous videos on the Yamaha QY series, the QY70 is a battery powered mini synth workstation from 1997. Based on the extended general MIDI sound set, sounds can be edited within certain restrictions. Three sound effects can be applied to your music, reverb, chorus and the user effect, which can be selected from a wide variety of effects. The QI70 has a 16-track MIDI sequencer, which can be used in song mode or pattern mode. Patterns can be up to 8 measures long. You can determine the musical key of a pattern, and in song mode, you can then line up your patterns on a pattern track and reharmonize it using the chord track. The QY will control the JDO8 here, taking advantage of that synthesizer's two-part multi-timbrality. The JDO8 will play the bass and the chord parts, while all other sounds will be from the QY. For this, I connect the audio out of the QI to the aux in of the JD, and then the JD's audio out to my Zoom R20, and also I connect the MIDI out of the QI to the MIDI in of the JD. Okay, my QI70 and JD08 are set up, so now I can start recording my song. At the moment we're in song mode, but I want to create a song from pattern, so let's change to pattern mode by pressing this button here. The green keys are used for moving the cursor around the screen. I'll begin by adjusting the pattern length to 8 measures. Move the cursor to the top right, hold shift and press the number 8 key. Pressing shift will always let you enter numbers directly and you're going to do that a lot. In this way, I also set the tempo to 122 beats per minute on the left side of the screen. Now let's create a drum track. Press the pattern button to go to the mixer screen, move the cursor to the third row and the first track, and now you can select the drum kit with the plus and minus keys. Let's listen. This drum kit will work. I don't want to have reverb on my drum kit, so press the menu button here, then choose the first menu option, move the cursor to the reverb mixer, and press shift and zero. In exchange, I'll add a bit of chorus in the next row. And now a drum sound like this. I'm going to record the drums in the step sequencer. Just press record, move the cursor to the step option, press enter, then press play. Choose a note length usable for your beat and then play the drum notes on the keyboard. You can use the menu buttons to insert rests or delete wrong notes. Okay, now I'll repeat the same thing again with 16th hi-hat notes. For this I'll change the note length here, reduce the velocity a bit here, and then press the note keyboard buttons and the rest buttons until my pattern is finished. Okay, drum pattern is in, now let's add a pattern effect. This is real-time quantization, which will change both the timing and the feel of the drum track. Press the menu button, then press play effects, move the cursor to the third row and select a groove template, in this case hip-hop. My drum pattern will now sound like this. Now a bass track. Press the pattern button to return to the mixer screen, go to the second channel and hold shift and press the minus button until you've reached the bass category of sounds. Now we can browse the sounds using the plus key. I'll record the bass track manually, so press record, then set the mode to overdub and then press play. Now. 
I want this track to have this 1980s video games feel, so I'm going to add a square wave playing some chords here and there. There's a square wave sound in the lead category here, and I'm going to use that on track 3 and once again record in overdub mode. Right, now I'll create all the other patterns off screen and I'll return for assembling them into a song in song mode. Ok, I've created not only an intro but also main A, main B, fill A, B and fill B, A patterns. Let's listen to fill B, A for example. Yeah, it's really bleepy and bloopy. Now let's arrange these patterns into a song using the pattern track. Press the song button and first adjust the tempo of your song, then move the cursor to the pattern track on the left hand side. Press record and make sure you're in step recording mode, then press play. And now you're in this list mode and here you can just insert your patterns into this track. Select the pattern bank you used in the middle column and the pattern you want to play in the right column. Press shift and the arrow keys to switch pattern banks quickly. We'll start with the intro, which is 8 measures long, so after that, press the cursor down key 8 times and then continue with main A. After moving the cursor key down 8 times again, insert main B into the track, then down 8 times again, return to main A, and so on. Now let's listen to this. I'll start playback at measure 6. Please listen to measure 8 and 9 when the sequencer is switching from the intro pattern to main A. Now, did you notice that lag there when the sequencer switched from the intro to the next pattern? Let's listen again. Yeah, there's an obvious timeout there. You can get rid of that by rolling out your pattern track into actual MIDI tracks. Open the menu, then press job and then select option 20, expand backing and confirm your patterns should be rolled out into MIDI tracks 9 to 16. Ok, now we can mute the pattern track, just move the cursor there and press minus and now let's start playback again at measure 7 and check if that lag is gone. Yeah, that lag is gone. Now we can add those MIDI tracks to add some detail and variation. For example, I'm changing the beat in the intro a bit by removing some of the bass drums and adding some hi-hat triplet fills. The triplets are one of those note length options in the step sequencer. Ok, let's listen to this. Alright, now I'm going to add some more details and then I'll connect the JD08 and I'll see you later. Ok, enter the JD08, which will play the bass and the square wave on top of the drums and the pads I've added on the QY70 in the meantime. As you can see, on the track mixer, I've set the volume of the bass and the chord track to zero, so the QY70 won't play them, but only send the notes to the Roland synth. I'll now set up the JDO8's two parts so it can play back two sounds I've programmed for this occasion. Press common, then part, then set, and here I'll select patch B43 for part B and B42 for part A. Ok, I can now adjust the volume and we should be able to hear both synths now. And now I can use the JD08's UI to tweak the sounds while playing back the song, and that's exactly what I'll do now. And that's also a vocal track and maybe a guitar track waiting on my Zoom R20, so let's listen. 
Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more of the QY70 or the JD08 in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. Seeing those subscriber numbers grow makes me happy and keeps me motivated to push out new videos every week. Oh, and also I gathered all the songs I created for my YouTube videos in the last year and uploaded them to Bandcamp. And there should be a link here or here if you want to take a look. Thank you. Yeah, and that's it for today. Yamaha QI70 and JD08 used for a song. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. By the way, the song is available on Bandcamp too. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.